good afternoon and Dobri den. Dobri den in Czech language means good day and that's how I'd like to greet you. My name is Katerina or they also call me KK. I love meeting new people, I love taking them around our city and showing them the well-known sites and also the hidden secrets. A little bit about me. You know, people often ask me what kinds of tours do you like to do best, what do you enjoy, and the problem is I enjoy it all. <laughs> But uh, one of the topics that people really love listening to is the socialist days and the Velvet Revolution. And I probably think that this is because in me they're talking to a real socialist relic. Because I was definitely born at a time when this country was Czechoslovakia. On top of that, I was born in what is today Slovakia. And when I was 18, I came to study to Prague, to the Charles University. So I have, and I'm not sure if to say, uh, probably not thanks God, but I have survived the socialist days and have vivid memories of them, which makes my Velvet Revolution and Socialist Days tour interesting. You're looking at the main entrance to the Strahov Monastery. And the Strahov Monastery, in fact, the old Czech or old Slavic word Strahovaki means to guard. And there is a certain peril, because in the socialist days, we as little kiddos were told, you young pioneers must always be on guard for your socialist homeland. But that's the last thing I'm saying about the socialist days for now. It's enough, more than enough. But the monks who settled here in this area, they were the so-called premonstratensians. And the man who established the order, Saint Norbert, he's right up there, above me, on the main entrance gate to the complex. They were established here in 1143 for strategic reasons, because they were guarding the main entrance road to Prague, or the main area that was entering Prague from the western edge, and this way used to stand the fortified gate. And one of the things that the monks did, they not only prayed and worked, but they also did very useful things, like they brewed their beer. So right there we have the St. Norbert Brewery. One of the fun things to do is to come up here, have a proper Czech goulash and a loaf of bread and wash it down with the beer. They also have the non-filtered, non-pasteurized beer, which is like liquid bread to die for. The most important thing for which people do come here is the library, theological hall with us, the name indicates, is a wonderful collection of books with theological thematics. There are more today than 18,000 books in the theological hall. The second hall is the philosophical hall, where today, today we have some 40,000 books. However, the whole collection is some 200,000 files with 260,000 works. So please, let's go and have a look. Hello. Here we are now in a very special venue. We've entered the most precious, valuable interiors of the whole Strahov Monastery. We are right now standing inside the so-called Theological Hall. Theological Hall was built with the great striving and contribution of the abbot of the local monastery. His name is Jeronim Hindheim. Also, he invited an architect of Italian origin Giovanni Domenico Orsi to build this absolutely wonderful structure. You can see the high baroque stucco reliefs all over the wonderful vaulted ceiling and in them the beautiful cartouches are the work of a local premonstratensian monk and a great artist Siar Nosetsky. He did most of those paintings. Also on both sides of the hall, behind me and on this side, there is a special section which has like a golden plated grate on it and that's locked because that's where there used to be the Libri Prohibiti. Those books that were seen by the Catholic Church as something that should not be read or accessible. Yeah. Also, when you look around here, inside those beautiful murals are mostly works that are linked with the theme of religion. So those themes are mostly taken from the Bible, uh, mostly from the books of Proverbs. Please, right up here above you, you can see a wonderful fresco, which is depicting the house that was built by the wisdom. 
By that we mean, if you look at the beautiful Baroque arch there, and if you look carefully, inside it there are shelves with books. So inside this house that the wisdom had built for itself, but not only for itself, is in fact a library. The wisdom is represented by the female figure with the candle in her hand, which is a symbol of wisdom, enlightenment, education, knowledge. And she is, with the gesture of her hand, inviting people to enter and experience it. On the left corner below, you can see a mother teaching the alphabet to her child, the beginning of education, the first steps. Then the two men, the scientists, discussing should they enter the library. In the central part, you actually see a man, a young man, entering the library, accepting the invitation of the wisdom. And further to the right, you have two older men already inside who have done the reading of the books and are kind of disputing above the content that they have read. Kind of fun and more modern thing that's linked with this place would be linked with Agent 007 James Bond because you know a lot of movies are actually filmed in Prague and in this particular hall the scene from Casino Royale was filmed. Thank you for your attention and let's move on to the philosophical hall. We have now moved from the theological hall into the philosophical hall. In this hall of the Extremely valuable things are when you look up on the ceiling the beautiful mural which is the work of Malberch and it depicts the philosophical development of humankind. What is fascinating that this great artist, he was of Austrian origin from Vienna, did the whole fresco within six months. He was over 70 years old at the time when he was doing it and he did it only with one helper. Some of the little things here, if you would look that way, some of the books are rounded up like this. And the story there is that there is a hidden spiral staircase behind it. And that way you can actually get to the top level to make access to the books which are further up there. Let me also just mention that we are in an area where the usual tourist can't really get in. All they do is they just stand behind the rope and peek in. But if you book a tour for those of you who are actually interested in seeing the books in entering this special venue, if you book the tour with us with personal prayer guides, ask for Katarina. I love the area here. I specialize in this. So we'll take you beyond. Please remember, book ahead of time. And seriously, that is very true because the number of people who can enter is really limited. They don't allow any big tours, so it's quite specific. So please, I do hope to meet you in here on your next visit to Prague. Bye-bye.